Obviously, the economy, I'll only speak from the point of view of the, uh, of the Philippine economy, which has been growing quite strongly at 6%, the fastest growth rate in the last 50 years in a five-year period. Uh, and that slowly, gradually, uh, is creating uh, more jobs. Uh, so it's about jobs, it's about peace and order, uh, it's about infrastructure, it's about uh, enabling more Filipinos to, uh, to have uh, a, a better life. And uh, that's happening elsewhere in this region and other economies. Uh, it's about uh, exporting more, uh, it's about more manufacturing, it's about the agricultural sector, which has been growing very, very slowly and where 30% of the population is. Uh, it's about lower business costs. It's about lower electricity costs. Uh, there are many challenges. These challenges were worked on for the most part in the last administration. Uh, I think business is looking for continuity. Uh, they've been quite happy with the outgoing administration. Uh, investment, foreign investment, has gone up 500% from 2010 until 2014 and 2015 when it reached about six billion dollars a year. So the Philippines has a good thing going for it and uh, I think everyone that uh, uh, likes the Filipino people, respects the, uh, the outcome of uh, the Philippine electorate in this election uh, in every one of the races, uh, wishes the best to the next administration and investors want to continue to expand their investments. Now, John, one pocket of the economy that hasn't done so well is FDI. By that, I mean foreign direct investments, of course. We are getting FDI data today. What needs to be, like, we've been tracking that data for such a long time, and we've continually lagged all the rest of the ASEAN countries. What needs to be done moving forward to uh, raise that bar? Well, the, the Philippine economy is not, as some people say, uh, a closed economy. Uh, that was changed in 1989. It's a relatively open economy. I mean, anyone can come in here and invest in a distillery or in a brewery, but maybe they don't want to compete with the companies that have the largest market share. But there are some sectors that are restricted, and I think a lot of attention has been paid to public utilities. There's a restriction in the Constitution that goes back to the American the times. The 60-40 rule. says 60-40. Some people misunderstand and think that applies to all investment. It certainly does not. It's quite limited in what it applies to. But utilities are a big part of our daily life. They affect electricity, they affect public transportation, aviation, shipping, uh, telecommunications. So some other economies do it differently. For example, in Jakarta, you'll find much better broadband than you do here. And one of the reasons is that you have four or five companies, some Indonesian, some foreign, that are providing it. You get 15 in Hong Kong. So that's something that ought to be considered. It was discussed, and different candidates in the election did uh, uh, propose that. And related to that is something the business community has long advocated, which is the Department of ICT. And that bill is presently uh, been passed in the, in the Congress. That's right. We are just waiting for the actual implementation of the well, bill. Well, the president has to sign it or allow it to lapse into law, either this president or the next president. We certainly hope that that happens. But it does no. feel like there's a little bit of momentum, at least, uh, for for the, the economy. For, oh, for I think, all, oh, there's a, there's great these. there's great momentum. Uh, in the Philippines is uh, and Vietnam. They're both growing at about the same rate of the larger Southeast Asian economies in a region that is the fastest growing in the world. The World Bank, in its quarterly uh, forecast last week predicted 6.4% growth this year in the Philippines. But John, for example, what particular sectors in the Philippines are investors, for example, American investors, looking at? You mentioned a, a long list earlier on. How about agriculture? We need a lot of investments. They, are they interested in going into well, it's modernizing very, very, agriculture? Well, it's very restricted. Uh, in, 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 in Brazil, in, in the United States, in Canada, in Australia, Agri people that are developing agribusiness need large areas of land. You can't do that in the Philippines. Uh, it's very complicated. You do have areas like the Del Monte farm, which is Philippine owned, and the Dole, which is now Japanese. It used to both were developed by the Americans in the 30s and the 50s. Uh, the only way to expand those is to lease land from small farmers on, on the margins of these large farms. So the business sector has advocated uh, more flexible arrangements going forward, more former cooperatives, farming communities, uh, the ability of, of uh, agrarian reform beneficiaries to uh, actually uh, mortgage their land. Uh, I would also emphasize in agriculture the need for irrigation. 
only only uh, 57 percent of the three million hectares that can be irrigated is irrigated. And of course, farm to market roads, crop insurance. That's right. Uh, there's a lot in All agriculture. All of these were brought up during the presidential debates. That's right. So at least, you know, the candidates are aware right. that these are priority well, areas. Well, just like on, on infrastructure development, on, on modern uh, public transportation in Metro Manila and Cebu and Davao, all of these things are known. Uh, the problem in, in past administrations has been the slowness of implementation, so we're looking forward to better implementation uh, uh, starting uh, as soon as possible.